I think I speak for all of us when I say I am over the Simpsons. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 times Family Guy made fun of the Simpsons. Well, that's the end of Puss. He was the best cat anyone ever had. For this list, we're looking at the most memorable and sometimes infamous scenes and episodes that cracked jokes at the Simpsons' expense. Who do you think is winning the battle? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. Quahog Doesn't Want Homer This episode is centered around notorious football player O.J. Simpson, who was infamously acquitted of murder in 1995. Peter befriends Simpson and brings him to Quahog, earning the ire of many residents. One of them is Mayor Adam West. West says they don't want Simpson in their town and We don't love you like we did in 1993. Naturally, viewers assume he's talking to O.J., but the camera reveals that he was actually addressing Homer. It's not only a great visual gag, but plays on the reputations of both. Like O.J., The Simpsons had a stellar reputation in 1993 and was at the height of its cultural power. But now, well, not so much. Peter, he murdered two people. What? He brutally killed his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ron Goldman. O.J. Simpson? Yes. Was this in the news? Number 19. The Chalkboard Gag One of the most famous hallmarks of The Simpsons are the chalkboard gags that open every episode. They consist of Bart Simpson writing a short and witty remark on a chalkboard while serving detention at school. In this episode, Stewie meets Bart in detention, and sure enough, he's writing on the board. Detention kids are scary! Especially that fourth grader writing on the board. This particular message reads, It's a pleasure to work for the Disney Corporation. Stewie then takes the joke one step further by speaking with the voice of Mickey Mouse. This gag is a reference to both The Simpsons and Family Guy being aired on Fox, which has been owned by Disney since 2019. Something tells us that neither Bart nor Stewie was being entirely earnest. Oh, that is such a load of truth! Number 18. Lois goes as Marge for Halloween. The third episode of season 20 opens on Halloween night. Happy Halloween, kids! Happy Halloween! Lois is passing out candy while dressed as Marge Simpson, complete with her green dress and wild blue hair. She also speaks in Marge's signature raspy voice, and when Peter refuses to help hand out candy, she imitates the iconic grumble of disappointment. You can help me pass out candy. Sorry, Lois, I have to go do a dangerous speedball and become the least surprising death in Hollywood history. <laughs> it's a nice little nod to Marge, but it leaves us kind of confused. Does The Simpsons exist as a TV show in the Family Guy universe? Obviously not, because the Griffins met The Simpsons in Springfield. So that means Lois dressed as a woman from another town? Why did she think that was an appropriate Halloween costume? Was that crossover episode not canon? We are delightfully bewildered. Number 17. The Simpsons Font Sometimes Family Guy is respectful of its obvious influence. And sometimes, well, not so much. After getting out of prison, Meg makes a so-so joke about Wesley Snipes in his movie Passenger 57. I met Wesley Snipes. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, and you know what's funny? He was inmate 57 too. Peter then sarcastically makes a note to always end on a strong joke before the credits roll. These credits are written in the iconic yellow font used at the end of every Simpsons episode. The suggestion seems to be that The Simpsons sometimes ends on weak jokes. Ironically, by making fun of The Simpsons, the episode does end on a strong note, despite Peter's cynicism. He was inmate 57? See, he did a movie called Passenger 57? Ah, well, terrific. Always end on a strong joke. Number 16. The Deluded Fan Originally, this episode included a version of the Little List song from comic opera The Mikado with new lyrics, as President Stewie lists off undesirable elements. Lest you be considering any sort of uprising, I warn you, I am quite prepared to make an example of any undesirable elements. And don't think I don't know who you are. It was cut from the TV broadcast for time, but appears on the season 6 DVD. One of Stewie's undesirables is a guy who loved The Simpsons back in 1994 and still finds it funny today despite the obvious disappointment of his friends. The guy who watched The Simpsons back in 1994 and won't admit the damn thing isn't funny anymore. The Simpsons has long been criticized for its decline in quality, and this has to be one of the most vicious jabs of them all. Number 15. Peter uses the wrong catchphrase. When Peter begins to suffer from amnesia, Lois has to reintroduce him to his own family. 
the second person she presents is Meg. But when she tells Peter that Meg is his daughter, he issues Homer's iconic, Don't! This is Meg, your daughter. Don't! No, Peter, that's not your catchphrase. Lois has to inform him that Doe isn't his catchphrase. It is, of course, Homer Simpson's, and has become one of the most famous catchphrases in the history of television. It serves as a nice little double joke, as we get Peter referencing Homer while also playing into his dislike of Meg. Get out, Meg! Get out of the kitchen! Go on, get out! Out, out, out! Out of the kitchen! Go on! Get out of here! <laughs> Number 14, Crude Origins. Family Guy is famous for its cutaways, and this one is quite a deep cut. Peter mentions that the Griffin family were once cartoon sketches on The Tracy Ullman Show. The reference, with its subsequent cutaway, is a dig at how The Simpsons began life. Hey, Lois, what do you say we go downtown and buy a dog? Hey, wait a minute, you already have a dog. The Springfield family first appeared on Tracy Ullman's variety show in a series of shorts. Creator Matt Groening provided only basic sketches, and the animators decided to just trace over the top, resulting in a crudely drawn appearance. The shorts were eventually adapted into The Simpsons, and with the move came more refined animation and voice acting. Relax. What is mind? No matter. What is matter? Never mind. <laughs> Number 13. Meme, not a meme. Peter and Ernie the Giant Chicken get into a street race, but Peter swerves into a tree and falls into a coma. Lois puts The Simpsons on the television while Peter lays in his hospital bed. This causes Peter to envision both himself and Homer entering and emerging from a hedge, with Homer saying meme and Peter saying not a meme. Meme. Not a meme. Meme. Not a meme. This is a reference to the Homer Simpson backs into bushes meme, taken from the Simpsons episode Homer Loves Flanders. It's a great gag that honors the legacy of the Simpsons and its place in internet culture. Plus, how awesome was it for them to get Dan Castellaneta just to say the word meme? Hey, what's up for today, Nettie? Number 12, Stealing All the Emmys. As the title suggests, Emmy-winning episode is all about Peter's dedication to winning Family Guy and Emmy. Griffins, let's make this our Emmy-winning episode. So get all your pukes and farts out now. He mentions that the show is often ignored at the ceremony, prompting Lois to condemn The Simpsons. She breaks the fourth wall and mentions that they are never doing another crossover episode, as it only brought more attention to The Simpsons. Yeah, Simpsons plays down to competition. Simpsons step into the sewer. Shame on you, Simpsons. In a way, the gag makes fun of both shows, insinuating that The Simpsons invited shame for stooping down to their level. Family Guy is throwing the negative reception back in the face of its friendly rival. Number 11, Quagmire Kills the Simpsons. While Family Guy's jabs at The Simpsons are usually pretty good-natured, this infamous gag was not, and got the show in trouble. It begins with Quagmire sexually assaulting Marge. The show has Marge deciding that she enjoyed it, which is already really disturbing. See, that wasn't so bad, was it? Oh, I gotta say, that was fantastic. What do you say we go back to your place for round two? Sounds good to me. Subsequently, Quagmire shoots and kills the Simpson family. Jeez. Fox refused to air the gag, if we can call it that, believing that it crossed a line in terms of the feud between the two shows. Seth MacFarlane was not happy, but Fox stuck to their guns. The gag was, however, included in Adult Swim broadcasts and the DVD. Ah! Get off my wife! Oh my god! Oh my god! <gasps> you shot my homie! I'm calling the police! Number 10. The Simpsons Characters on Jury Duty in an episode that was mostly devoted to making fun of Georgia's law enforcement system, there was a succinct moment of self-aware jibing. Don't worry about it, guys. I read nowhere that Southern sheriffs really want to be talked down to by big-shot Northerners. After a traffic stop, Peter, Quagmire, Cleveland, and Joe find themselves judged by a jury of their peers. I can't believe this. Two weeks in prison on trumped-up charges. That trial was a total sham. Or at least a group of familiar characters who Peter sees as his peers. Although, as Joe points out, that's probably not how they see themselves. I know we were in trouble the minute I saw the jury. Well, at least they're a jury of our peers. I don't think they see it that way, Peter. It's a quick moment that cleverly adds another layer to the argument over whether Family Guy is inspired by or stealing from The Simpsons, something that fans of both shows wouldn't be able to settle until a crossover episode three seasons later. 
Number nine, beating Homer Simpson to the punch. Wait, wait, what the hell's going on? What do you mean I ruined television? A season after sentencing Peter to Dungarees County work camp, Homer Simpson dashes onto Family Guy for another quick cameo. Again, poking fun at the commentators who insist Seth MacFarlane is ripping off The Simpsons, Homer runs into the Television Producers Guild to announce that he thinks he has broken television. I'm Peter Griffin. I'm the guy who ruined television, and I'm the guy who's gonna fix it. Guys, I broke television, and now you have to help me fix it! Yeah, looks like this is one we beat you to! The Springfield native is a little too late this time, however, as Peter is already there to set up the exposition for his story. Fun fact, Dan Castellaneta makes his Family Guy debut in this episode, with his trademark Homer panicked voice. Number 8. Stewie Griffin's Mr. Plow Rant Hello, I'm Mr. Plow. It may seem overly simplistic now, but in 1992, everybody found Homer's little jingle hilarious. Those of us who are old enough to remember can recall just how often it was sung, as reciting the words was hardly a memory task for the ages. Call Mr. Plow. That's my name, that name again is Mr. Plow. But once it was stuck in your head, it was not coming out, and you'd be singing it all day. We all love Mr. Plow, including Stewie. However, his jealous rant takes a pot shot at people who insist on singing the 11 word long tune as though it's some big deal. You know the type of people, the, um, actually, we'll let Stewie describe them. Yes, we all love Mr. Plow. Oh, you've got the song memorized, do you? So does everyone else! That is exactly the kind of idiot you see at Taco Bell at one in the morning. Number 7. Peter Griffin admits it. In vino veritas. In wine, there's truth. Or, in Peter Griffin's case, it's more likely to be where there's Pawtucket Patriot Ale. Mm -hmm. A drunk Peter's words are a sober Seth's thoughts in this instance from season 14, where Peter flat out admits, while inebriated, that they, the Family Guy creators, take a lot of inspiration from the other animated family comedy on Fox. Obviously, they wouldn't admit it, of course. We act like we didn't take a lot from The Simpsons. We took a lot from The Simpsons. Less a shot at The Simpsons and more self-deprecating humor, Seth MacFarlane and Matt Groening had previously sat down together for an interview with Entertainment Weekly, during which The Simpsons, as well as All in the Family, were indeed named as MacFarlane's main influences for Family Guy. Veritas, indeed. Number 6. Police Superintendent Chalmers by the time season 18 aired, any suggested animosity between The Simpsons and Family Guy was clearly in the eyes of critics and nowhere else. Most main cast members from both shows had been present for the crossover, and some later cameos were voiced by their Simpsons' respective voice actor. Skinner! I am outraged that you've kept this from me! You were supposed to call as soon as the new scoreboard was in! This would have been the case for Superintendent Chalmers and Hank Azaria, except technically this isn't a cameo. Police Superintendent Chalmers may sound like his Springfield raised estranged twin brother, despite being from Quahog, but this is an entirely new character. One son? Police Superintendent Chalmers? My brother is superintendent of the schools in Springfield. Our parents divorced when we were very young. There's no explicit teasing being made at The Simpsons' expense here, but it's still a fun little appearance from the veteran voice artist that needed to be mentioned. Number 5. Mr. Burns and Smithers Cameos some cameos are simply not to be, and it's left to Seth MacFarlane to fill the void. And on this occasion, he's pretty darn close. Smithers, who is that young go-getter? That's a character from another show, sir. Simpson, you say? Pretty much, sir. Again, another jibe at the Who Copied Who Brigade, Family Guy stokes the fire a little more, with its implication that Peter Griffin is pretty much Homer Simpson. <laughs> In fact, so much so that he confuses characters from the other show. The airing of this cameo coincided with the Simpsons episode Tis the 30th Season, in which Family Guy was referenced too. We can't compete with the big boys. Disney's already laying ground for a new Family Guy world. Mr. Burns and Waylon Smithers cameos could be a jibe aimed at Harry Shearer, who is the only Simpsons voice actor not to appear in Family Guy thus far. Number 4. Stewie's Simpson-esque Sellout it's not hard to see why people would have assumed there was a rivalry between the two shows, especially given the rather sharp early jab that Family Guy took at the Simpsons' endorsement of Butterfinger during the 90s. Nobody better lay a finger on my Butterfinger. <laughs> Again, for those who are, shall we say, advanced enough in years to remember, there was a Simpsons character endorsing practically every product out there. 18 bucks for this? What a ripoff! 
on early merchandise, Bart would for some reason be seen sporting a blue-colored shirt and often throwing out an I caramba or a don't have a cowman for almost anything. Some Bart Simpson dolls! Eat my shorts. Okay. Mmm, shorts. Season 5 of Family Guy has Stewie fronting his own campaign, forcefully quoting Bart's lines and Homer's catchphrase as though his soul were sold long before filming started. I'm more of a sellout than you were when you did those Butterfinger commercials. Nobody better lay a finger on my Butterfinger. Do! Number 3. Peter's Jaundice this is another Blink and You'll Miss It reference, but the jury's out on whether the show is making fun of The Simpsons or actually paying tribute to its longevity. We need a family that hasn't been on TV forever. Let's try The Simpsons. Much has been made of the yellow shaded design of The Simpsons characters, but it's never been suggested that it's simply jaundice. Oh my god! Peter, you don't look so good. What are you talking about? I feel great! Like I could go another 20 years or more. Although not a direct reference by name, Peter's face turning a shade of yellow and then claiming he could go 20 years or more can only be comparing him to one other decades long running animated show. It's a lighthearted moment in an otherwise more somber episode, in which Brian volunteers to sacrifice his own life to give Peter his kidneys. I'll do it. What? I'll. I'll do it. I'll give you my kidneys. But, Brian! You'll die! Number 2. Simpson Hit and Run In an homage to one of the funniest comedies in history, Season 4's classic episode PTV opens with Stewie falling out of a cave Frank Drebin style and onto his tricycle as Ira Newborn's Police Squad theme plays. However, initially looking only to be a tribute to the Naked Gun films, Stewie pulls into a rather familiar looking garage and chases Homer Simpson into his house a la The Simpsons intro. <laughs> The double parody is topped off by Peter not even knowing who Homer is, despite all of the previous references to him. Hey, Stewie. What the hell is that? Actually, we say double parody, but Stewie also drives through the Overlook Hotel, the Land of Oz, a level from Doom, and Hoth from The Empire Strikes Back, among others. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Crossover Yay! A crossover always brings out the best in each show! Where do we start with this crossover? The courthouse filled with characters sitting beside counterparts? Family Guy's James Woods meeting the Simpsons' James Woods? You lived in Springfield? Yeah, I worked at the Quakey Mart, researching a role. Pawtucket Patriot Ale ripping off Duff and a not-so-thinly-veiled MacGuffin? Or was it Peter and Homer's fight stemming from the fact that Griffin says something that many viewers who have drifted from the aging show feel? That he is, quote, over The Simpsons. I think I speak for all of us when I say, I am over The Simpsons. <gasps> well, what are you saying? I'm saying The Simpsons suck! Once more, the question is begged of just who is being made fun of here. Though The Simpsons had been accused of being stale for years, in recent times, so is Family Guy. Perhaps the latter is a mirror of the former, after all. This beer tastes exactly like Duff. It's just a lousy ripoff. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! It's not a ripoff of Duff. It may have been inspired by Duff, but I, I like to think it goes in a different direction. Still, after seeing radioactive Homer and Peter duking it out, who cares? The worst episode ever! Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.